Okay folks, uh, welcome and today we're going to be filming some information on how to install a welded wire fence on your residential property and also how to stretch that fence in an economical way because I couldn't find anything else really on it. So first off what you want to do is install your corner post, good quality corner post here. And an angle wire with a tensioner across so you have a nice quality wire. Second, what you want to do is you want to leave enough wire to overhang here so that you can hook onto it and stretch it tight on this section, this first eight foot section, okay? So what I've done here is I've tacked it in the top. It's hard to see here, but I've tacked it in the top and I tacked it once on the bottom and left about an overhang of about three squares. Next, what I do here, and this is very important, is on your inside post, so your first eight in, is that you make sure that this wire is straight down the side. That ensures that your fence is gonna stand up straight, okay? Next, what you wanna do is you wanna alternate on your tacks up each one in each section. And this ensures an extremely tight corner. Now, at the bottom, it's hard to get a double hook. As you can see, I just put a single right here. But on the top, I put a double both ways. Sort of seeing the sun there. Double both ways. Okay? So that's your first section here. Now let me make another point before I walk down. As you can see here, the line of fence posts is not exactly straight. That's okay. Because once you hook this fence post on, it's going to pull those in line. It's extremely hard to get them going upright and straight on each post. So just get them into the depth you want. Now today we're doing a six foot welded wire fence. It's gonna keep the dogs in, it's gonna keep the deer out. I'm not too worried about cattle, but if we send just tight enough, it's gonna keep free roaming cattle out also. Okay, through the magic of editing, I've saved a little time walking down. So how do you stretch welded wire, stretch welded wire fence? It's not the easy. If you know ranchers, they'll use what's called a wire stretcher. That doesn't exactly work for welded wire because as soon as you put any pressure on it, it bends, okay? These welds are really light. They're very simple welds by machine, and as soon as you put any pressure on them, they're gonna break. So we can't do that. So this is what I've come up with. Basically, how you do a welded wire fence, let me step through the corner post here, minus the wood pile, is that you take a two by six. You take a two by six, that's almost the entire length. Then you can make it the entire length of your fence. Like I said, we're doing a six foot fence, but it doesn't have to be. And what I've done here is I've taken a two by six on each side of the board, okay? On each side of the fence, excuse me. And then what I've done is I've secured it with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bolts in alternating fashion. Now these are cramped down really tight and if I go around to the other side of the fence, which is kind of hard to see, but let me slide through, there's the other side, okay? What you want to do here is you're basically taking this welded wire fence and you're sandwiching it in between these two two by sixes. Now you can use two by fours, but the longer, the wider the thickness of the board, the more clamping pressure you're gonna get and the more surface area, which makes that it's gonna be stronger, okay? Now, most people have what's called a wire stretcher. It's great, it works good, especially for ranch fencing or heavy fencing. But this welded wire fence, it, it can potentially take a lot of stretching. So what we're gonna do here is actually, I went down to the hardware store and I purchased a come along. These are pretty cheap. They're about $20, it's a very simple design. I think this one's rated for 2,000 pounds, okay? What I've done here is I've attached it back to the back post with a, with a piece of chain. Uh, hook that chain onto here and then hook the thing onto here. Now, could I run the chain both on there? Probably. I'm using this uh, add a link to secure it. What you want to do here is when you lift the fence up off the ground, make it a little easier, easier with the helper, is you run the wire through at about nine. Okay, now this is a six foot fence. What you want to do is halfway. So halfway in this, there's 18 sections of wire. So halfway down is about nine. So what I did is ran about nine and I ran the fence or the uh, come alongs winch line through the fence wrapping on the board. Now, what I'll tell you is it's important to run the wire on this side of the fence first. 
run it across to this side, loop it back around and then hook it. Now what that does is that puts your pulling power on this side of the fence board, which is the power of the side that you want because you want it tight against this fence post, okay? That's the impression here. Now as you can see, the welded wire fence is laid down. I have that ladder there just to protect my neighbor's boat, um, make sure that the fence didn't flop against the boat. But what we're gonna do here is, uh, I'm gonna get on the winch here and we're gonna crank it down. We're gonna stand this fence up as tight as we possibly can. And then uh, we're gonna go ahead and tack it. Okay, so now we're on the winch here. We're just gonna crank this down, stand the fence up. Well, as you're doing this, what you want to make sure is that it's not catching on any of the fence posts. So we're going to go one more crank and then we're going to walk down and push it out from each fence post. All right, so once we got it to this point, what we want to do is just walk down each of these fence posts and push it to ensure that the fence is not being stuck on anything. We can also kind of pull it over, make sure it's going to be tight on the bottom. That's where it's important. The fence has been attached and string lined at the bottom of the fence, not at the top. We can fence all the, fix all these up and downs as we go, but the important thing is that the fence is tight on the bottom. So as you go along, kind of pull your fence over, make sure it's standing up properly. Now this looks pretty good. It's not stuck on anything. And it's also fairly tight. What we're going to do is we're going to go back though, we're going to give it a couple more cranks just to ensure that it's going to be tight now that the bottom has been pulled over all the way. So, it's a little hard here. We don't want to break the wire. So we want to feel that, see how it feels. That is pretty taut. That's fairly decent as far as the connecting goes. Can't really pull it any tighter. We're just gonna let it sit here for a second. Just to make sure. And we're gonna give it one more notch. Once you have the wire fence up and stretched, what you want to do is you want to tack it to this far post. Now this section here, in between this and this, the corner post, is going to be loose. We're going to come back and do that at a later time. We're going to move this down and we'll pull it up that next post just to get this section a little tight. But it only has to do with this section, it's not the whole fence. So what we're going to do is we're basically going to do the same thing that we did on the other side. And what's important is we start at the bottom. So we want to kind of pick up the fence and make sure that it's sitting properly. Okay? Then we're going to attack it. Now just like the other side, we're going to use the cross back and forth, just like I showed in detail on the other side, all of the fence. Now you can see this fence is angled. That's okay. That means that that's been pulled angled like that, and the fence is stretched like that. And that's just due to the lay of the land. If when we look back earlier when you saw the post that I put in, it kind of dipped and rose and everything as we went through the yard. So what we're going to do is the bottom is most important. So we're going to start at the bottom and we're going to work our way up to the top. And once you get up here to the top, you might actually have to use a little force. And that's because this fence stretcher here is putting force against this post and holding it out a little bit. So you might have to actually push in on it. If you get a little bit of leeway, that's okay. Like I said, these posts are going to move and everything's going to happen once it rains to straighten it up. So we'll start off down here at the first post. We'll get as low as we can on the first pack. Make sure that we sink it in clear so not only the 
back is holding it, but the fence itself is impregnated into the pulley system of the control strong. So now this is going to be our first cross tack. So what we're going to do on this one is we're going to do a crossways. We're going to do one tack one way, and then we're going to come back and do a tack the other way. So this one was at this angle, so the next one's going to be at this angle, right on top of it. And that's just going to ensure that that fence stays taut in there and doesn't pull one way or the other. Next pull, uh, one, it doesn't matter, but everything else you do up past this point is going to be based on this first one. So whichever angle that you choose, either like this or like this, just alternate up as you travel up the post until you get to the top. So this one I'm just going to put in straight, and that's okay. But just wherever you can put in cross-hatched ones, that's what you want to do. So now, this one sits like this, this one's flat. So the next one we're going to put in, which would be here, eventually, because this one's going to be another vertical, here is going to sit at a cross angle to this one. So it's going to sit like this. So this one will be vertical, this one will be that one. Okay, so now that this is done, you can see how these cross hatch each one. When there's not a place to cross hatch, they go straight, straight, then right back to the cross hatching. You can see I broke my support wire, which I'm going to have to fix before I take the pressure off the come along there, but we'll get to that in a second. So, some other things to note here. So, as you're doing this, what I did is I did 10 foot spacing all the way down the line. And these are eight foot posts. These are eight foot T posts. Those are eight foot wooden posts. They're sunk to a depth of two feet. As you go down these, back up here, so you can see how this is angled. Okay, that's okay. Just like over there, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start on the bottom and ensure that it is the correct depth. So we'll pull up on the wire, make sure it sits flush. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna stay equal in this. So if we follow this up with my finger, you can see the post is way over from that. So we're just gonna grab it, we're gonna pull it over. We actually even pull over one more, and then as we tighten this up with our tire or wire ties, which I start on, uh, I do two at the bottom, and then do every other one. So, so this one will get one, this one will get one, and we'll skip to this one, skip to that one, skip to that one, and we go like that all the way to the top, and then, the last one gets one, and if there's enough post, as you can see this one eh, probably doesn't, but you know, if we had an extra inch or so on here, we would do another tie here to secure that top piece. But just like all the other ones, start from the bottom, work to the top, and then manipulate this pole so it stays right in line in a straight shot. The other thing I should notice is that we purchased these fences, these welded wire sections and 50 foot sections. That was cheaper than purchasing them in 100 foot sections, so we have to do some splicing. How we do splicing on these is, it's kind of hard to see with the sun. I'm actually gonna move around to the other side here. Okay, so how we do splicing here is we overlap the fence three sections. One, two, three. Okay. Overlap the sections one, two, three. It's hard to get this in focus here. Now the top section, we run across and we clip off, so if I was gonna do these, I was gonna use this fence, let's just use an example. I would cut on the inside, 
a cut on the inside of this wire here. So inside, inside, inside. So that I have this section of wire, okay? I have this section of wire in order to wrap around here. So what we do is we overlap the fence three sections, one, two, three. Now on the top one, we run it into the fourth section and wrap it around the top wire on the horizontal wire, okay? All the other sections we take and we wrap them on the vertical. Just so wrap down, wrap down. Now they ideally should be like this. I'll try to get that in focus for you. They ideally should be like this and they should stay bottom, bottom. Sometimes you're just gonna run across a situation the fence isn't gonna line up properly. And so you can do it on the top. That's okay as long as you make sure that these wires here stay tight. So that's a, you do that all the way down the bottom and then you repeat on the bottom just like you did on the top where it's hard to see here. But this one wraps on the horizontal and the rest all wrap on the vertical. And that's how you do a welded wire fence for residential use.